Welcome to another episode of the Amazing Marketing Minds podcast. Today we have the one and only Simon Hesseltine here with us today to talk a little about SEO. Uh, and we're laughing because it's taken me at least 10 to 15 tries to get his last name. I apologize, Simon. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Um, thank you for coming and joining us today to talk a little bit about marketing. How are you feeling today? Not too bad, not too bad. As you can tell from my accent, for those people who don't know me, I've driven down from Virginia. <laughs> right, right. Everybody in Virginia sounds like that. <laughs> they did at one point. <laughs> oh, I guess that's true. That is true. You're one of the originals. <laughs> uh, and for those of you who don't know, Simon is the VP of audience growth at Trader Interactive. He's held a multitude of roles as an SEO. Uh, he and his team and the teams that he's led in the past were winners of the 2017 and 2014 best in-house search team. Uh, at the U.S. Search Awards. So congrats. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> uh, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself, Simon. Well, well first, I want to say when, when you say multitude, it sounds like a job hopped every 10 minutes. I, I, I've managed to last you know seven years at some of those positions. So. True. true. Uh, it, it's, it's been interesting. Um, I've gone around a lot of uh, different companies working in different roles around SEO, working in uh, around paid search, just trying to figure out, you know, what's going to work for their individual situations, and it's I, I've seen a lot of successes, and I've seen a lot of sometimes amusing, sometimes <laughs> head banging against the desk failures. Uh, but when you see those failures, it's um, it, it really is when you learn, when you experience, right. uh, but you also learn to fail fast and move forward from those. That, that's true. It's not the it's not failing. It's whether or not you learned from it. Absolutely, it's huge. What what got you into this space, Simon? Uh, how did how did all this happen? Like for the, uh, you know, again, the purpose of uh, of this podcast for everybody listening or who's new to the show to the podcast is to learn a little bit more about some of the speakers that come through the Triangle Marketing Club. Um, so definitely love to hear a little bit more about what got you into the space and how you got started. Sure, absolutely. So I was born at the usual age. Is is that? Back too far. <laughs> Let's start there. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, back in my past life, I was actually a software developer. I worked on a language called Smalltalk, uh, then moved over into Java. And I was working with a company that was taking the yellow pages and replicating them, putting them on CD. So mm -hmm. we would ship out these CDs with the yellow pages on them for companies to put on their intranet. And it would replace, you know, these two, three pallets of phone books. Right. right. Um, for, for the millennials out there, they may need to have, you know, all the folks of my generation explain to them what a phone book is. <laughs> but we would replace those and it would save, you know, Bell Atlantic and all the other baby bells at that time a lot of money for those $1 CDs. Right. So the natural next step was, let's take these and put them on this internet thing and see what happens. So we put them out there. Uh, obviously, the big telcos had all their own sites. They had their yellowpages.com and superpages.com and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the second tier yellow page sites didn't. So we put their pages up online. And then we sat and thought, okay, now, now what do we do? And then we found out about these things called analytics packages. <laughs> so we put analytics on the sites. And then we went and looked at those. And we saw these really nice straight lines of traffic. Horizontal lines of traffic. Oh, no, those are the worst. <laughs> and then we said, okay, well, what do we do now? How do we actually get people to, to look at these? And the CEO said, well, I've heard of this thing called SEO. Does anybody want to look into this? I said, well, you know what? Why not? Put my hand up. So I started learning all I could about SEO. Yes, I read the SEO for Dummies book. I mean, we're talking like 2004, 2005 here. Right, yeah. So it's a bit ago. I started reading, you know, all the blogs at that time. It was Search Engine Watch was like the big blog. Uh, started, you know, attending some of the conferences. Back at the, those days, it was like SES was the big conference. Um, and, you know, just really started growing from there. I was there for a couple of years. Sorry, I was at that, that company for seven and a half years in total. Okay. Then I went over to the agency side and I started working with a lot of nonprofits. And the company then started to transition into working with more e-com sites. I was there for two years, and then it was over to AOL. Oh, I see. And AOL was a really interesting challenge. I mean, it was a, a decent-sized team, 10 folks. Yeah. 
Uh, but we had 135 sites we were working with. And these were sites that a lot of people had heard of, a lot of people used, but didn't necessarily know they were AOL sites. Right. Apart from the ones that had AOL at the beginning of them. So that was a real fun six and a half years, just trying to get those sites working. And then things changed. Huffington Post oh, came absolutely. in. Yep. Uh, we we divested a lot of the AOL sites and yeah. Are, are there any still still around? Any notable sites that you worked on that people might recognize or? Well, HuffPost.com, oh. TechCrunch, okay, and okay. Gadget. Yeah, uh, AOL Autos. Uh, sorry, Autoblog is still there. I think. Okay. So there's there's, there's a lot of sites that are they're still there. Uh, quite a few that have been put out to pasture or spun off. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and I noticed you you know you went from in house to agency then back to in house. Yes. Um, do you <laughs> prefer one versus the other? Like what, what would you say was the biggest difference between, cause I'm assuming with an agency, you had to work with a bunch of different clients. Yeah. So the, the, and it's different for every kind of person. Sure. Yep. For me, what I was missing on the agency side that I have on the in-house side is the ownership. Okay. So the agency that I worked with didn't tend to have retainer clients. It did on the PPC side, but not on the SEO side. Okay. It was more an auditing company. So we would go in, we would do our audits of those sites, we'd hand them off, all our recommendations, okay. and then we'd go off to the next client. There was not really any follow through to mm. determine how well did that happen? How well did that work? You know, Did what we suggest really change things? I mean, apart from one client where I actually, there was just something so simple as they didn't have a link to their homepage from their other pages. Oh, wow. All we did was implement that, and they jumped up like 20 points in the rankings on all wow. the other pages. Something like that, we could see that working immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, SEO takes time. It, it does, absolutely. Yeah. And, it take, and you got to consistently work on it. it. You know, it's not overnight. Absolutely. And it, SEO is a never-ending game. And when you're handing that off to somebody else, and then you're not coming back at any point to see how well did it work, what worked, what didn't work, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, You've got a disassociation with it. Yeah, so absolutely. going back in-house, I got that ownership. I had these sites. They were my sites. What I did to them, what I did with them, I lived by that. Right, right. That's that's amazing. I think as marketers, that's a big challenge that we face all the time. Um, you know, at our, at our agency at Tortuga, we have retainer clients, so we do mm -hmm. have that ability to continue working with them on an ongoing basis. Um, but the Triangle Marketing Club consists of people, you know, all the way from the marketing assistant all the way up to the CMO. And I think, um, you know, a lot of them can relate to to that to that issue. Um, so if we were to fast forward a little bit, um, what does, you know, uh, the VP of audience growth do where you are now? What is what does that entail? So on my team, I have SEO, I have um, SEM, mm -hmm. which of course has changed from what SEM used to mean 15 years ago. 15 years ago, SEM meant everything that was in marketing. So it was SEO and PPC. Mm -hmm. Now, these days, SEM is pretty much all just the paid side. Yes. So I have the SEO, I have the SEM, I have analytics underneath me, and then I have our dealer solutions team under me as well who do SEO and SEM for individual dealer websites. And you oversee the teams? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what is What is your average kind of day-to-day -day sort of look like then? Well, uh, excluding the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, That takes up a lot of time for most people. <laughs> some some days it can be like Tetris with a calendar, trying, oh, to, yeah. trying to slot those meetings in there and trying to figure out exactly where you have time to actually do the work. Um, but for a lot of times it's, you know, meeting with the team, talking about what's working, what isn't working, looking at the analytics, trying to figure out what do we need to do to change? Um, where are we doing well? And where are we doing well? How can we double down on it? Where we're not doing well? Why are we not doing well? Is it something that we've tried that didn't work? And again, going back to that fail fast, mm -hmm. If it if it's not working, Figured let's get out, out of there. Figure it out. Something else. Um, and I'm working with uh, about eight uh, major sites uh, on our side. I'm working with RV Trader, a commercial truck trader, <clears throat> cycle trader, um, ATV trader. We've got PWC Trader, which is watercraft. We 
snowmobile trader. I mean, the, we, equipment trader. We, we've got a lot of traders. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of trading. So, yeah. and, so we're working with all those different sites, trying to get those to a point where, you know, obviously we're growing them as much mm-hmm. as we can. Um, in commensurate with how you know much we're we're selling on those, uh, to make sure that we're delivering a really good cost per lead for all of our clients. Sure. To make them happy, uh, obviously to reduce churn on our side, but to you know if we make them happy, that's going to be a byproduct of that. Right. Absolutely. Interesting. Um, well, you've also you know you do a lot of speaking engagements. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you mentioned um, you know before we hit record on the camera, you have uh, PubCon coming up. Yeah. Probably already be done by the time people see this. Uh, but you've got a bunch of different events that you've done in the past. Um, how did you get into speaking? Um, where'd that come from? Where- well, it's it's funny. Um, when I was on the agency side, uh, actually, actually, even before the agency side, when I was with, with the company before, I had actually wanted to try speaking. I'd applied to a couple of places and just didn't get accepted. Just out of a personal goal? Just a like, personal okay. goal thing. So I actually started doing Toastmasters. Oh, they're 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 fantastic, and it it was great. I mean, it, it if you have any issues with public speaking, they can definitely give you the encouragement uh, and the help that you need. And obviously, I need to go back because I can hear myself with the ears, and <laughs> they knock that out of you. I've only <laughs> been to a few. Um, there you go. There's an um. Yeah, uh, but uh, but but I, I I went into that and did that when I got to the agency side. Mm-hmm. My CEO was doing quite a bit of public speaking and she didn't particularly care for it that much. Interesting. So the night before she was supposed to go to New York and do a presentation, she said, you're going up to New York to do the presentation. (laughs) Here it is. I've put the deck together for you. So I learned the deck uh, on the train on the way up and I went uh, up to the, it was like the 42nd floor of some building where the conference was being held went in and spoke with two folks who later became friends. In fact, one of them helped me get the job at AOL oh, wow. uh, because she used to be the VP there. We did this presentation. It went down fairly well. And I was taking the train back that night because we were all going to, all three of us going to do the same presentation at another conference in DC. Right. Okay. So I'm catching the train. They're both laughing at me saying, why don't you fly down? It's so much easier. As I'm on the train on the way down, I get a phone call telling me there's been a huge lightning storm. The airports are shut down. Oh, wow. So the other two might not make it to the presentation in the morning. (laughs) And by the way, the 15-minute presentation you did today, it's actually a 45-minute presentation tomorrow. Wow. Good luck. Okay. (laughs) Let's make this work. Let's see how I can expand this out. Well, when I got there the next morning, luckily, one of the folks was able to make it in. Uh, so it was two of us on stage at least. And it's the only time I've actually been heckled on stage. Wow. And it's the first time I was being recorded. Wow. This is giving me anxiety. I wasn't <laughs> even there. <laughs> well, I, I made a statement about how uh, Wikipedia is a trusted source, which at the time, Wikipedia was it ranking pretty much top now. three for everything. Okay. And someone in the crowd went, who says that? To which my response was, Google, do a search. Right. Which shut them down, but you know, it's, right, right. Uh, it, so I, I made my way through that, and, and ever since then, I've um, done quite a bit of speaking, quite a bit of public speaking, and uh, I, w- I would say all around the world, but it's been Europe and North America. Okay, interesting. Uh, I, th- I mean, I think that says a lot about you. I mean, the fact that that was your first, you know, one of your first experiences, and then here you are, still doing it. Um, proves that you've really got that that failure thing really down pat you know fail fast move on learn and keep going yeah <laughs> that's very impressive although if if it goes badly tonight maybe you'll say <laughs> maybe you've not got the fail fast down fail a bit faster <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's hilarious well a lot of our team's going to be there so we'll, we'll uh we've, we've got you covered great, great. <laughs> um who would you say your your content's built for by the way when you're up there speaking who are you talking to the audience, um, and, well, and, yeah. and, and, and I'm not being facetious with that. It depends on the, on, depends the, on the show. Group. Okay, it does. That yeah. makes sense. Um, if you take a look on my website, I've actually got every speaking gig I've ever done listed there, mm-hmm. and you'll see that I've covered a lot of different topics. Okay, okay, and it is based on who I'm talking to. So, for example, the the presentation I'm giving tonight, I did mm. give it for the first time last Friday. Okay, it's a brand new presentation. Oh, we're excited. Uh, 
it's based on my experience. These are all fails that I've encountered through companies I've worked at or with over the years. Um, so, it, so you're not going to get this content from anybody else. It's not, you know, somebody grabbing the uh, the, the Oreos Super Bowl thing off the web yeah, to say, to talk yeah. about that as uh, what a great example. These are all experiences that are my personal experiences. So I think it, it's it's all going to be fresh for that audience. I'm speaking at another conference um, in about a week and a half, which is for um, auto dealers. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be talking to them about how they can staff out their SEO, SEM teams, their marketing teams. Uh, you know, it, it's directly for them. So I, I do tailor my content to the, to the audience that's going to be at the actual conference or whatever. That's, that's amazing. I think it, it definitely helps and it keeps the audience engaged when you're, I mean, you're doing it for them. Uh, it does also sound like a lot of work too. Um, how, how far in advance do you like to you know prepare for a speaking engagement, especially if you have to redo it? So anybody that's been on a panel with me will tell you that they get slightly upset that I get mine in a week before they do. <laughs> and and the, the reason I look at it doing it that way is, for one, that way I can make sure I get to cover what I want to cover. Right. And right. they're going to have to tweak theirs to be around what I have to do. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Uh, but, I mean, it works. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, it is a lot of work. And so I will you know, try and pitch the same content sometimes mm-hmm. at different shows. Right. It will not be the same content necessarily that I will present sure, from show yeah. to show. So, for example, a few years ago, I did um, presentations on social fails. <clears throat> and I did that presentation for about a year. One year after I had done that presentation, there was not one slide that was the same from the first presentation. It, I, I kept changing up the examples, kept changing up, but it, the, the theme was the same. It was just easier to work within the theme rather than to have to build an entire presentation from of brand course, new. Of course, of yeah. course. Oh, that's a good strategy. It's a good method. Um, everybody watching this has already missed your your presentation here in mm-hmm. Raleigh, unfortunately. Um, but the video <clears throat> is going to be up around the same time it's going to be up on YouTube. Um, it's going to be up on the website. So, you know, to encourage some people to go check it out and, and go watch the presentation, uh, what would you say is one important, I'm sure there's a dozen, but what would you say is one important takeaway from, you know, today's presentation for, for the audience? Well, the most important one, uh, well, there's a couple of important ones. I would, I would say probably one of the first points I make is make sure you baseline your data. Because if you don't baseline your data, how do you know whether you've succeeded or failed? Sure. All you know is that something happened, but you're not quite <laughs> better sure. Better or worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's an important one. Um, my most, I mean, and this is going to be a spoiler for you since you haven't oh, seen it yet. that's true. That's true. The most important thing that is that on the last slide is use common sense. Okay. I like that one. And it's, you would think it's a simple one, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's one of the most missed. It, absolutely. A lot of people don't have it. It's <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate, but so true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Um, well, we try to keep these very short and sweet. Cool. Um, people's attention spans are getting worse and worse <laughs> every year. So um, definitely appreciate you telling, a little, telling us a little bit about you, your your experience, and um, telling us your story, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um where can people find you, Simon? Uh, do you have anything coming up? Do you need anything to tell our audience, anything like that? Um, well, by the time this comes out, the next couple of shows that I was going to be doing will have been done. Right. So, <laughs> so just I've, travel back in time. Yeah, right. I mean, I've, I've got SMX coming up in November. I've got PubCon Florida coming up in March. Um, I mean, simonheseltine.com has links to all my social accounts there that people can connect with me at. Fantastic. And we'll also throw you a link as well whenever we post this. So um, that pretty much wraps it up, guys. I appreciate you tuning in to another episode of the Amazing Marketing Minds podcast. Don't forget to you know follow the podcast, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and, and check out the different social media channels that the Triangle Marketing Club has to offer. Uh, Chris has done an amazing job running this group for the last couple of years. And ultimately, his goal is to provide as much value as possible. So if you have any feedback or anything to give us, feel free to shoot the group a, a direct message. But that pretty much wraps it up, Simon. Appreciate your time today. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for having me.